Okay. Hi everyone. Hope you can hear us. Hope you can see us. Uh, my name is Johannes Jyrkkä. My name is Jere Alikko. And uh, welcome to this 5G hands-on development webinar. A uh, few highlights. So this event will be recorded. And then uh, we will have also Q&A section at the end of this presentation. So please type your questions to the chat and then we will try to go through those at the end of the presentation. I, I didn't remember three things that I did correctly. Yes, yes. awesome. Perfect. <laughs> so we can go further. So uh, here you can see the agenda for the day. So first short introduction, uh, who we are, what we are doing, and then what we are doing here in Oulu. And uh, then we will talk about what is 5G. We will cover 4G also a little bit. And then we will test, uh, tell, tell about the testing capabilities and what, what facilities we need and what is Otava, what is uh, Otava doing for the 5G development and testing. And then we will cover also some drone testing. And uh, then we will talk about some example working days that we have. So we want to highlight some um, misconceptions that might be about the working in the IT field, like we are just working on front of the computer all day, eight hours, and that's it, coding and that sort of things. So we do a lot of, lot of other things also, and we want to give some example of those. And then uh, at the end of the presentation, they still reserve some time for uh, one person from the trainee attraction team who will sp speak about the trainee positions and the tips on applying to Nokia. So, yeah. Without further ado, shall we go ahead? Yes. So maybe some short introduction, Jere, if you could go first. Yes, uh, I can go first. So my name is Jere Alikko. I'm uh, working as a product specialist in product line management organization of Nokia. Uh, in a nutshell, what it means, so you get the get the idea. Um, our organization is in the middle, in the between of R&D and then the customer and customer teams. So we are basically building the bridge from the R&D to the customers and vice versa. So we are we are the middlemen, so to say. Um, I studied business administration and IT, and um, I got my first position at Nokia as a summer trainee in 2020. It makes it three years mm, in the company yeah. altogether. And uh, the first position was in 5G Ottawa laboratory, which I will send more soon, tell a little bit more about it. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, I'm Johannes Jürke, as mentioned, and uh, I'm working currently as a project manager in the test engineering team, working with the delivery capabilities of Nokia. But uh, in, in my previous role, I was in the field testing team, in the drone testing team. So I will talk about that today more. And uh, I have a background in mechanical engineering, so I graduated 2020 in the University of Oulu. And uh, my first position was 2018, I guess, about four years now in the company. 2019, I started mm. as a part-time and then full-time. And uh, yeah, actually, there was a funny story about the first, first uh, interview, actually, that I had in 2018. I was really excited. I was like... Uh, so prepared. It was my first real, real interview for the, some company. And uh, the first question the interviewer asked was like, hey, can you tell something about Nokia? And I was, I was prepared, you know, <laughs> I was really prepared. So I had checked from their websites, like they had some cool innovation, that sort of things, like some thermometer and, and th things like that. So I, I highlighted those and then said like, yeah, Nokia does phones and, and those sort of things. And then the interview was like, uh, you know, we haven't made phones since 2014, right? And I, I was super embarrassed. I, I was ready to walk away at that moment. I was like, yeah, I know where the door is. <laughs> but uh, I anyway got the position. And uh, uh, as, a, as a bridge to this today's subject, what Nokia is actually doing uh, is, is not phones, but it's actually base stations. And uh, base station is, we will open up what base station is a little bit more, but bas basically you can see, for example, here is a picture of the radio. So there, there is other other products, not, not just the radio in that uh, there's like a old legacy versions for the 2, 3, 2, 3, 4 Gs, and then 5, 5 G radios, air scale ones, baseband units, the catalog is huge. So there's a lot of, a lot of products that we have. And we have, uh, uh, for example, telecommunication partners uh, as a customers. And then we have also um, business to business customers. And uh, yeah, in, in all, we have uh, about 3000 uh, people, people working in here. And uh, we are a specialist in radio, 
technology. We have done that for 50 years. And we have everything from the from the very first ideas of the new new product and taking care of the old ones to the latest testing, everything in between, R&D, volume production, everything you can imagine. So we, mm. we have all that capability, mm. right? Yeah, and we also have 50 years of experience in the radio technology and actually the always called as the home of radio, which mm. states it pretty well. And uh, also besides the history, we also have future plans. So there has already been investments to Oulu campus before, but now, as, as some of you might know, we will have a, a new, brand new, high-tech, energy-efficient mm. um, campus built in, in 2025. So also, we have, you know, future plans, future plans for, for the Oulu side of, of the whole company. Exactly. Really, really exciting times in coming. And the, the, the new place looks really nice. <laughs> yeah. If you have seen the pictures. Yeah. But yeah, hey. Uh, if we talk about a little bit more about the base stations and how those work, so Yere, could you keep yes, yes, about I that? can tell a little yeah. bit about it. So to keep it simple, you know, you know that you can see the base stations basically everywhere nowadays. You can see them uh, on the top of the buildings, on the side of the highway roads, even on the street lamps nowadays. And um, to keep it simple, it, there, there are you know tons of different components, but these are basically the main components. So antenna, radio module, and baseband. And also depending on the scenario, sometimes the antenna radio module might be integrated together. But these are the three key components of the base station side. Of course, there are you know tons of different. So we need the cabling, we need the, the pole, we need the brackets, we need the cooling system. So a lot of lot of different components in the site, but as I said, to keep it simple today, these are the, the key key components and how it actually works. How do, for example, you guys have the, the access to the mobile networks? Johannes has a very, very nice demonstration here. Very so, interactive, a very nice yeah. thing. <laughs> so this is a picture of the uh, Finland map and uh, some base stations gathered around. As, as Ira mentioned, they, they are everywhere, middle of the forest or next to a road or in, in high buildings. It, it, it can be any, anywhere, basically. And not just in Finland, but actually around the globe. So this is just an example of map of Finland. And uh, basically what, what we are doing, I, I mentioned that uh, Nokia's customers are, for example, telecommunication operators. So, so and uh, I will not go into high detail what is happening uh, when, let's say that Jere sends a Snapchat to Johannes or makes a video call or whatever. I hope you answer. Yes. <laughs> and uh, basically, uh, there is, there's lot, lots of things ongoing. There's like uh, attaching the phone and then having connectivity and checking the uh, all, all the restrictions and uh, with the SIM card and then handovers from one base station to another, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's really complicated. Uh, there is also, for example, core network in, involved and everything everything like that. But what, what I just want to highlight that uh, with this picture, that this is what we are doing. So you get the idea that what, it, what it actually Nokia is doing and uh, what kind of technology and uh, things we are working with and and to give maybe a, yeah so so now when you are coming to the <laughs> interview you don't first thing say that Nokia is actually doing phones but you can answer correctly that hey we are doing base stations yeah, yeah and also you know this everything that you can see in in the picture is is happening in the speed of light so the latency is very very minimal you know for example you are uh facetiming your friend there is if, if the connection is good there is there is no latency basically at all. Exactly. So everything is happening in a speed of light and very, very fastly nowadays. And uh, yeah, actually already covering the next topic a little bit, uh, that there's difference between the latency in 4G and 5G, but can you also a little bit open up this uh, yeah. difference yeah. between the 4G and 5G? So actually this, this is illustrating it pretty well. So in 4G, in the traditional base station, the antenna is sending signal as a one cell, 120 degrees. And then one cell or signal is divided by X amount of users within the cell. So, uh, for example, in this one, there is three people within the cell and everybody's then having equal throughput, equal, pretty much equal share of the cell. But nowadays, along with the 5G, it's, it's becoming faster and, you know, from our perspective, a little bit more complicated. Yeah. But, you know, from, from the consumer point of view, everything is becoming faster. And that's one of the key techniques 
along with the 5G is the technique called beamforming. It basically means that you can see on the animation that the radio is so smart and clever that with the algorithms, it can basically create, uh, you know, individual signals, so-called beams to the, to the users so that everybody, not everybody, but, you know, people are having more throughput, better connection, better coverage and everything. And also the beamforming can, you can think of it as a, a stand-up comedian on a stage and there is a spotlight. The beamforming is, you know, so smart that it can also follow follow the user and sense the UE signal along along where, where, the, where the user is moving. So that's maybe the key thing that we wanted to highlight today, the difference between the 4G and 5G. Yeah, and it enables a lot of use cases. So, uh, of course, better throughputs, more users can be served using the one base station. Uh, we took out of YouTube this kind of cool video to highlight the possible use cases uh, in, in different fields. There can be better automation, uh, better connectivity, VR use cases, uh, you name it. So you can have, a, like a, instead of FaceTiming your friend, you can have a hologram uh, call with your mm -hmm. friend, for example. Mm -hmm. It can enable new use cases and also make some older uh, generation use cases more, more efficient. And uh, we are always developing this 5G technology and other technologies also. And the idea is that uh, when we are making always new things, we have to make sure that those are working and we have uh, to we can improve those then more and more and we need to test that and now in this video you have seen you will see some clips from the Ottawa so Ottawa which here will cover a little bit more later uh, it, it means over the air validation area and we have this new cool facility where we can actually do the 5G uh, testing because compared to the older generations uh, we are now working with OTA over the air and uh, we have to make that kind of validation. So we need mm -hmm. also new facilities to make that kind of testing happening. So, yeah, if you can hear it. Yes, yes. So as Johannes said, um, we need to think outside the box, basically, along with the 5G and also for the future, future uh, technologies. And um, OTAVA, as you can see, stands for over the air validation area. And as Johannes already highlighted, we are highly focusing on OTA. So what happens between the radio and the mobile phone or the measuring device? What happens in the interference between over the air of those two? And uh, OTAVA is located here in Oulu, and it's actually one of the most important Mm. Uh, laboratories of the mobile networks, especially when it comes to the OTA testing. And 5G in general. 5G in general. And it's also considered as basically as a, a flagship mm. laboratory of, of mobile networks. And um, yeah, the key thing why why we need it is, is that we need to, you know, uh, we need more capacity for the testing. We need more uh, spaces. We need more innovations to, as I say, think outside the box. So that's the key reason why we have this kind of a laboratory called Ottawa. And here is actually a picture of Ottawa in 2016. And uh, everything has changed quite a bit yeah. since that. And uh, as you can see, the setup is very, very simple and pretty rare and rough, I would say. And it was, it was actually a garage located in Oulu. And uh, of course, you know, this testing setup, a couple of engineers working with the 4G and 5G is not nearly enough to keep up with the competition and, and, and to ensure the quality of the products. So step by step, we we started to build um, this kind of own RF chambers, different testing environments for, for our testing purposes. And also along with these uh, environments, for different scenarios, we came up with the OTA testing strategy or testing flow, which we have developed for, for our products. Also, you can see a couple of statements that we have. So as I mentioned, um, Ottawa is a flagship of Nokia's 5G and also beyond, so 5G advanced and 6G um, integration activities. So very, very important um, laboratory in general. Then also, uh, we can state that we have a world-class 5G OTA, so over the air, testing capabilities and also including the beam forming validation and tons of other, you know, testing capabilities as well. Um, but of course, you know, none of these fancy looking uh, futuristic RF chambers or, or in environments, they are nothing without the people. Yeah, I would say so, that, yeah. so the people, they are really the focus 
of Nokia and also also in Ottawa as well. So we have first managed to hire key experts, for example, Johannes. <laughs> Thanks. And secondly, we have managed to keep them here. Also, Johannes, we have managed to keep. The so yes. so <laughs> that's that's the key thing. We are trying to push the engineers to be as innovative as possible and to even throw, so to say, stupid ideas in the air because you'll never know when it will break. And also what we mean with the collaborative ecosystem is that we are working very, very closely with the, you know, with the local chipset vendors, with other ICT companies of, of the whole area, with the universities, research institutes. Uh, we are already, you know, highly involved in the 6G, for example, and the research institute with that. And um, yeah, so very strong group of stakeholders has been, you know, um, built around Ottawa and also in, in full Nokia all. Mm, exactly. And uh, yeah, maybe yeah. something about that. So then um, I briefly mentioned about the testing strategy and testing flow. And to make it simple, this is what we mean. And uh, if you think about the, the flow or the graph, the early we catch the falls, the better. And that's actually the purpose and the reason for the flow and for the strategy so that we can really develop as you know good performing radios as possible and so that we can capture the possible faults as early as possible i'm not going to go through all of these there is a lot of different testing to be done in ottawa but in, in a nutshell a whole day to in, uh, exactly yeah but in a nutshell you can think of it as a from left to right to simple to complex and once the products are coming in to the ottawa testing facilities they are always going through this scenario so first we simulate the beams, for instance, what kind of graphs, what are the beam weights, the directions that the radio should perform while doing the testing. Then we are making sure that it's exactly as expected with the passive antenna testing, where we only uh, measure the antenna elements, not the full radio or the baseband set setup, but the, the antenna, antenna panel and the elements. Then in the second part, we have end-to-end -end indoor testing. We have tons of different chambers, as you already saw in the pictures, but you know, different scenarios, only measuring only one user at the time, measuring four users at a time. Even we can measure thousands of users at the same time, you know, different kinds of uh, testing chambers for, for different purposes and, and scenarios. Then of course, once we have tested everything indoors, we are also validating and testing everything outdoors. And Johannes is the expert on that, so yeah. he will tell a little bit later about it. Mm. But uh, yeah, yeah, maybe we can cover first this kind of indoor testing that is actually yeah. happening. So as I mentioned, it would take a whole day if we would go over everything what we have here in Ottawa. But actually, uh, if we can highlight one of the most important ones over the wall. Yeah, this is actually one of us, you know, one of the most important um, test environments of Ottawa. So, and it's actually the brains are still working in Ottawa who came up with the, with the first wall. So it's fully, fully innovated and fully patented by Nokia nowadays. So it's very, very important for our testing. And um, in a nutshell, we wanted to bring in uh, outdoor field testing into the lab conditions. So traditionally, if you want to measure field testing, um, and of course, we are still doing it, and it's very as important as, as any any other fair. You need to go around the car, around the block, and do the testing, or with the scooter, or by by walking, or whatever. And uh, uh, I think that we have some technical difficulties, but I think we can. Okay, it's better. Technical team, okay. Can you hear us? Can you see us? Yes. Okay. So then we can continue. So this is what the wall actually looks like from inside. And as I said, you know, we can demonstrate the field testing scenarios and test them indoor, indoors. So basically, you can see a phone in the picture, and it's actually connected behind the wall. And then with the antenna elements and antenna probes on the surface of the wall it can actually send the RF signal and RF energy towards the base station. And the base station is actually located on the right side of the picture. You cannot see it, but you know, the base station is at this point sensing that there is a user and it has to, you know, perform the algorithms and the beam forming and all the connectivity needed. 
And then we can do the same thing for second, second um, phone, second UE, third UE, fourth, even fifth UE. We can do the same thing. And now the radio is, you know, sensing that, okay, there are now three altogether and how the performance is, you know, reacting when there are more UEs than only one. Mm. And then we can start to move them to make it even more complex. Yeah. <laughs> so we can start to move by switching the signal from antenna to, an, to another. We can move them from uh, right to left, left to right, uh, up and down, you know, as you know, one UE might be standing still. So it's causing the interference to the other UEs and how it's, you know, how the beamforming is and the radio is performing while, while the UEs are going far away and closer. We can also simulate the distance so that the phone is going further mm, from, from, the, the from the base station, yeah. then it's coming more closer to the base station. So all kinds of different scenarios we can we can test with with the wall. But as I said, of course, this is important and very important, but the field testing is is as important as this one. And now can you tell about more about the field testing, how, how we are doing it. One thing I want to highlight with the wall, uh, just a quick, that this is great environment to do the testing because we can do everything greatly re, uh, repeatedly. So mm. you, you have those use cases, if you have one phone, two phones, 10 phones, 100 phones, and then you need to move those. You can always repeat them. So you can test the algorithm and test it again. And that's uh, also something that we try to copy copy in the field. So we want to, of course, go as, as close to the customer as we can. And uh, that's what the field testing is really about. And, and of course, the real time, uh, real life environment changes, like the how the weather changes, the mm -hmm. RF energies and those, those kind of things. We need to, of course, test that. And we can say like, hey, we are doing really important uh, and cool uh, simulations indoors and also doing the uh, testing also outdoors as close to the customer. So this is what the field testing is about. And uh, we are doing the testing with the cars and the drones. And uh, in this picture, you can see Oulu Zone, which is our new testing facility. And uh, it's really important place for us. Uh, we initially had it, uh, it's 30 kilometers away from the main building. And we initially had 2019 when we started, we had only four radios in uh, 12 meter altitude. And we had like a three times three meter square area for the people to work. Mm -hmm. It was really tight with, with the, all the units in, indoors making sound and everything. And mm -hmm. uh, we quickly learned that there was more and more test requests coming then, then we, that we need actually more, better facility for the testing. So 2022, we built this RF tower by ourselves. Uh, it's 50 meter altitude. There is 26, 36 and 46 meter altitude. Uh, radios, different radios. I think there is over over 30 in the tower. And then we also built this base camp. So it's like an office building where we have electric tables and uh, where we can uh, work in peace. And then we have, of course, co coffee, coffee machine. Coffee is really important for the Finnish engineers. You can survive without it. Exactly. And uh, then we have also last there, lab as a service, means that we can automate things, we can control everything remotely. It's like a real Nokia real estate, so it has the uh, permit for that. And uh, uh, there is, for, for example, I will show some clips from there. Uh, there is this landing pads for the drones. So, mm. so it's like a, it was designed so that we will do field testing here in this area mm. when we were designing and making this place. So a little bit more, more about that. I will not touch today on the driving testing. I will focus on the drone testing only. But uh, we are also doing those with the 5G cars. And uh, so what we are doing in the drone testing, that's something that drone testing is something that we have developed here in Oulu. I think it started 2014, was it? Two of my colleagues uh, had this crazy idea that, hey, could we attach phone on the drone and then measure, measure that kind of way, this kind of field testing. And, from that crazy idea became the whole team now, nowadays, mm. almost one decade after we have whole team around that crazy idea. And uh, as, as you can see, uh, we can uh, expand on the current testing. So we can fly to the places where traditional car testing cannot go and uh, we can do more, more uh, accurate testing because as in the wall environment, you can repeat everything. So drones have real-time genetic GPS, so it can go really, really accurate, uh, like inside 10 centimeter area. So the measurements are closely repeatable. 
uh, we we can control everything, and uh, we can we can like uh, even though we are in real life scenario, we can still do repeatable measurement, which is really important mm. for the algorithm. Yeah, but, and testing testing capabilities. And uh, yeah, we have these kind of Nokia drones. So Nokia developed uh, the uh, R and D team is in the Espo side, and then we are also using commercial drones. And for both drones, we have developed these uh, internally designed payloads. And the payload is the device that does the 5G measuring. Whether it's car, whether it's drone, those are just moving the payloads. And the payload is doing the 5G measuring. And uh, how we are doing measuring nowadays, there, we still need two people. One is the operator, one is the pilot. And the pilot is the person that can take manual control with the controller if needed. And then uh, operator is the uh, like the person who can like orchestrate the measurement. So start and stop the measurement remotely and uh, communicate with the pilot that now we start flying and everything is basically automatic in the drone side. So that, as you can see in the right hand uh, side, drone is actually following waypoints. So you can just command the drone like, hey, fly 360 with the waypoints and it will automatically do that. But for security reasons, we still need two persons to operate this. And uh, some example results that we can do. So, for example, we have talked about beam forming. So, what we can do is that we can fly uh, around the tower and the uh, radios, and we can show, like, hey, this is what our beam forming looks like. So, we can visualize something that is invisible to the naked eye. We can show something mm -hmm. some for the engineers and also for the customers, and like we can show how, how things are going. And we can do the, this kind of different uh, reports and then. We can do, for example, regression measurement where we compare the results to the previous software build, and we can say, like, hey, uh, performance improved 3%, 5%, 10%, and so on. We can have this kind of data available yeah. from, from the measurements. And uh, we are kind of mimicking like the indoor, uh, so we can do similar similar reports, and everything is actually going to the same 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 place where we have this kind of Common common test uh, scenarios, and then we can we can compare the results from the walls to the to the drone testing and driving mm -hmm. testing and that sort of things. And uh, we are going to the well, like the next steps in the drone testing. We are going to the fully automatic automatic missions. So in this uh, clips, you can see we have this docking station, which is actually also made by Nokia, and R and D for that is also in the Espo side. And uh, Imagine this docking station is like a automatic charger for electric cars. So you can, uh, when you arrive uh, with the drone, you, you, the hatch will close to protect from the weather, and then there's this kind of um, uh, battery chargers which will automatically lift and then charge the drone. And once the battery is full again, hatch opens, the uh, connectors get, get go off, and then drone can continue the mission automatically and then come automatically land again. So what this enables is that I mentioned that it's 30 kilometers away from the uh, main building and uh, 18 miles uh, for those that uh, uh, are from the States. So basically it, it's a little bit far away, it takes half an hour to drive there. So, so what we can do now is that we can start fully automating these things. Uh, and uh, I think that's really, really nice that we can just, when we have a request, we can just automatically uh, make this kind of measurement. Mm -hmm. so that's that's the direction that we are going. So we are applying uh, permissions that we can we can do that fully remotely. So that's the direction that we are going nowadays with the drone testing. And it's also the same thing with with basically everything. So yeah, we yeah, want yeah. to highlight the automation and you know to make everything as automotive as as possible. Mm, exactly. As as we have automated already a lot of things, then we can uh, give give like the. Uh, more of usability for mm -hmm. the we, we need to go sleep at sometimes we, we work only eight hours a day or maybe sometimes a little bit more but anyway we have to go sleep also mm -hmm. so then the machines can continue while we are sleeping they are doing the testings exactly that, that, that's the that's the way of working that we want to do but hey uh, I think that's all from the drone testing so short short uh, this uh, introduction what we are doing and then uh, I think we have good time to then have this training information also. So uh, some highlights or examples of our working days, something that uh, uh, some pictures that we chose from our phones and then then to give some examples that we are not only working on, on in front of the computer eight hours a day. So these first pictures are from my business trips. So uh, first one is actually um, from 
my, my dad he used to work for Nokia 20 years and he, he was like uh, saying that uh, when I was saying that I will go to my first business trip he was like really excited where are you going I, I went to Rome as my first trip and that, that was really exciting where are you going well I'm going to Kauhava <laughs> and uh, for those of you who don't know Kauhava is like a small city about 300 400 kilometers from all not, not not so fancy but it, it was a great experience and uh, I went there with Janne from our team and uh, I, I learned a lot during that trip. So even though it wasn't fancy, it was still a really nice experience. And the other picture is from the 5G drone trials, not actually a trip because the University of Oulu is actually like five kilometers from my, my place. So anyway, uh, funny situation that when we were trying to get the connections working first day, it was raining. So you can see me in my small car and then this kind of laptop and the connection with the phone. And then uh, you can see the red light there, the drone, uh, everything in, inside the small car and then draw, open, opening the car door and yelling to the next car like, hey, how you guys, are, are you getting the connection with the other teams? And it was it was a blast, but yeah. Then some pictures, uh, failures pictures, basically. So we have parachutes in, in drones. So I, I made a mistake and then it popped out and uh, it, it, I, I made things even worse. And we actually used four hours putting those knots back to each other. And it, it was, we had checked YouTube videos and failed and then it, it didn't work. And then the other one was, I crashed this 5G car. So we had this uh, nice event. Actually, that was also for the students in, in all. And when I was coming back late, late night, I actually crashed the uh, reverse radar in the 5G car. And uh, what I want to, show with these pictures that you are okay to fail. So nobody's perfect. And the idea is that when we are developing 5G, when we are doing something new, something that nobody has done before, you should not be afraid to make mistakes. And and nobody's punished for the mistakes and uh, everything is like uh, short, shorted out and there's no like bad, bad feelings about that, you know? What yeah, I mean? indeed. It, it, it's like a, the culture that we need to try. If you, if you don't, I have a really good saying that if you don't fail, then you're not doing anything. So you need to make mistakes to uh, get things done, basically. Mm. And then last slide that I had, uh, I've been st starting to really enjoy this kind of customer visits and presentations. And I have gotten a lot more courage when, when compared to the uh, first uh, like four years ago when I was doing the presentations, I, I was more, much more nervous about those. So I, that's, that's also something that this picture is highlighting. So. And I, I really enjoy talking about the drone uh, testing that we are doing and uh, sharing sharing the experience and communicating with the with the customers and people who are coming to visit. So that's that's something really nice to have and do. And uh, actually, you can see Jere is actually in the right corner also. So he's also a lo lo lot of parts on, in those and really well organizing those kind of visits. So yeah, if if you can also share some experience that you have. Yes. So uh, I have a few bullet points from my basic daily daily work. So as I mentioned in the beginning, our team is, you know, in the middle between the R&D and customers. So we are occasionally, you know, directly communicating with the customers. Mm -hmm. We are listening to their, their feedback, their wishes, their complaints, and, you know, if any, <laughs> if any, and then, you know, handling their, their features and, you know, requests, et cetera, et cetera. Then of course, in hand, is is coming that the, the product related discussions and decisions. So we are also in our team. We are you know involved in the product related discussions and you know decisions for the future as well. And then uh, you know the last bullet point for the customer visits. So that's that's also something that I'm doing nowadays. Pretty much you know organizing and then also hosting the customer visits in in all. And the first picture on the right top corner. It's actually also from my first business trip, and I got more far than you. I got to Espo. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's not it's not Rome, but it's still Espo. Yeah, and uh, this is this picture is from the their um, facilities. I got to you know get familiar how they are treating the customers when they are coming, what kind of facilities they have, and this this picture is from the executive experience center. So. That's where they hold the customer meetings and you know demos and everything. So so that's their their facilities. And then from the uh, bottom left, the next two pictures is are from the same customer visits across the the customers are from the other side of the world, and uh, you know basic 
stuff about about Ottawa and you know what we are doing and showing why we are doing and you know you know trying to trying to you know tell tell us as well as we can and why we would be the best partner for, mm. for them especially. Then as we have already highlighted the customers might be teleoperators, they might be enterprise customers, but it also related to the customer visits in Ottawa. We sometimes have even non-technical customers. So mm. for example, these last two pictures are from the ambassador visit. So we have occasionally government related visitors topics to discuss. You know, we are negotiating about the um, cooperation between the universities, between the cities, even between the countries, maybe regarding to the ICT sector, obviously. And uh, if you are very lucky, you might get a nice cake and a cup of coffee in the negotiation room after the visit. You need to even, you know, discuss even further about the, the cooperation. Mm. But that's that's pretty much from my daily work. Yeah, I saw the picture of the a really nice looking coffee and uh, <laughs> yeah. and uh, uh, some snacks. But hey, um, I guess that's all from our side. Or, or yeah, did you have something else in no, your mind? No, I think that's pretty much all. Okay, at this point. At this point, at least. Remember that there is this Q and A, so you can ask questions in the chat. But uh, at this moment, we want to uh, give uh, floor to the Philip, Philip actually from the talent attraction team, so he can. Uh, uh, then show up something that we are oh, doing. Right now. Switch. Yes, I think we are going to have this exciting, exciting technologies that you have discussed. And if, uh, thanks for coming here. Yes. Thank you for having me. And if those technologies and uh, these words made you excited and think about how we could join Nokia, whether in Oulu or in one of our other sites uh, in Finland, uh, yeah, I'd like to share. A few words. So my name is Philip Polaga. I'm part of the talent attraction team. And then for the Q&A part, also Sanna Raisanen will be joining us uh, to answer your questions. So yes, uh, how to join us at Nokia Finland. Uh, if you are wondering, the QR code present on this slide uh, will take you, if you scan it with your phone, to our websites and filter specifically student opportunities. So if you would like to look through those as we are talking, feel free to scan it. Uh, but good news for you are that Nokia Finland employs around 500 trainees every year. So the hiring numbers are really high and uh, in all three of our sites altogether. Of course, the biggest season for summer trainees is uh, for trainees in general is in the summer as it's practical also for you as a student uh, when you have more time uh, for, for a traineeship. However, uh, we hire annually and all throughout the year, trainees, thesis workers, and also fresh graduates. Here's worth mentioning that for trainee positions, uh, it is a requirement to be a student, uh, to be enrolled as a student. But uh, if you are not, there's also fresh graduates and entry-level positions available. Uh, currently, if you scan the QR code, you will see multiple positions that say uh, summer trainee and say multiple openings. Uh, so those summer positions are still there to be found, although they're coming uh, to a close as we are mostly already filling the summer positions, but the positions are available all throughout the year. So not to worry. And if you want to look through the positions later, the link nokia.com slash careers is, is where you will find them. And uh, as Johannes and Diaga mentioned, it was kind of their gateway to a career to a great career with Nokia. So the yeah, traineeship exactly. is, is the first experience. That's how you get get your foot in the door. Mm. And uh, then from there on you get the, you get it rolling. And uh, what kind of trainees are we looking for? It's uh, always slightly tricky questions because there's so many opportunities in Nokia and uh, in Olu. It's such a unique site that you have the research and development and the production under one roof. Well, more than one roofs. We have yeah. multiple <laughs> buildings, but you get the point. Uh, but uh, kind of to tell you the categories, we try to sum up technical categories on this slide. Whether you're interested in software development, testing, automation, or the kind of the specialty, local specialty of all of the system and chip development, uh, or whether you're more into hardware testing, or then seeing the direct production itself. There's so many opportunities. and. Uh, if you're wondering, is there just these technical opportunities 
what if I do not have technical background? Well, Nokia is such a big company that also uh, when it comes to supply chain, so whether, when you're studying economics or when it comes to management, uh, recruitment, similar positions, you can find traineeships uh, in those positions as well. And it's worth keeping an eye on the careers that Nokia has. Uh, you can see the general skills. Uh, you'll find what best suits your background on this slide. Uh, but when it comes to the soft skills, which can be useful in every single position, it's we are always looking for team players with collaboration and networking skills. Uh, and when you have a passion for learning, that's that's so important for training positions because that's what you will be doing. You'll be learning as a trainee, and you will learn so much during your training. Nobody should be ready. You know? Yeah, right. You, you, you cannot have the feeling that I know it all. And that would probably be a bad sign if you, if you follow my guide. There's nothing left to learn. I, I know it all. But uh, anyway, uh, what are the tips for application? Uh, so when it comes to your CV, uh, it's good to remember the general rules. Kind of look at the basics and do the basics well. So have a clear structure of your CV. Make it readable. So when someone opens the CV, immediately they see where you want them to look, what do you want them to see. Uh, it's worth checking spelling, of course, uh, if due to neurodiversity, there's some, uh, it, there's difficulties to check the spelling, of course. I will take that into account so you don't have to worry about that. But generally, you want to keep it also concise. So straight to the point, you want to make sure what is relevant, what is important, and include those things. And that will help you also when you tailor it to the specific job, uh, you only include the things that will be relevant uh, for the selection process for the position. Uh, one very important reminder, uh, it will help you and it will also help whoever is looking at your CV is to add a summary about yourself in the beginning. So when someone opens the CV, it's not just a bunch of bullet points, but there is some a uh, short summer in the beginning that uh, helps them understand what are kind of the main skills and what are you interested in, and so on. And uh, although it is concise, your application process, it's also important to show a bit of your personality because at the end of the day, uh, you are a person, uh, the, uh, the hiring uh, manager is a person, so they are looking for who you are and who would you be as part of the team. And definitely do not be shy to include some special projects, special interests uh, or publications or some, some side projects that you like working on because those show, it's kind of the great mix. It shows the technical skills, but also uh, the personality at the same time. Uh, so that's a, that's a great thing to keep in mind. And then when it comes to your cover letter, uh, of course, uh, customize it based on the job you're applying for. And uh, just like, Johannes was very, very precise and he looked, researched the company beforehand. That's definitely a good idea. And not just to kind of impress, but also to find out yourself. Am I actually interested in this? Uh, and is this company good for me? Are we a good match? Is this position good for me? Is it a good match? And also mention your future career goals. That will again be useful for you because uh, once you get the job, uh, the, your teammates will understand what they're looking for in the long term and what kind of tasks could kind of help you uh, profile yourself for that uh, long term goals that you certainly have. And uh, in the cover letter, it's the best opportunity to kind of specifically talk about uh, certain things because on the CV, it's a little maybe more general. Your LinkedIn profile may be also more general, but this cover letter, it lets you uh, point out some specifics for the position. And when you're applying, uh, please uh, send your application in English as uh, it's the language of uh, Nokia and uh, attach your study record if you're applying for a trainee position as uh, that will be needed for the onboarding process. And a reminder that the interview is not a test. Uh, Johannes mentioned that he, he made some blooper on the interview and, uh, and that's, in, in, in a way, it even shows that uh, you are a human and it happens to everyone. And it, it doesn't mean that you failed the test. Uh, it's a conversation where you try to find out if you are a good match for the position and it's a two-way discussion. So also you want to find out if you actually uh, want this position. And uh, it's a good reminder to keep your LinkedIn profile updated. Uh, it will be a place 
uh, to look at your uh, background uh, for the hiring manager and uh, uh, generally can create interest uh, for other positions as well. So from the talent attraction side, this was a little uh, little uh, set of tips, but maybe there are some questions, whether from the technical side or from the recruitment side. So I believe we can move on to that. But just before we go there, uh, you can engage with us on social media, uh, whichever you prefer. Uh, you can see different kind of flavors of Nokia on the Instagram, Nokia Finland, or on TikTok, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Familiar faces there, actually. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Maybe in a few months, you, your face will be there as well. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. Take a minute of technical break if you can stop sharing so you, we can get a full screen yes. camera. We can this to be having a period of its own. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so please uh, keep on posting these questions. There is actually so far only one asking for recording, and uh, the tone of this session is recorded, and we will share with you most likely uh, YouTube channel, but that will be for. Uh, in our social media, I'm, I'm sure. Mm. One question, is it possible to apply to trainee positions in S4 or o uh whenever I'm not from uh, old university and I'm studying in uh, Ammatiko uh, University of Applied Sciences in English as a programmer? Yeah, maybe Sanna will also. Yeah, sure. Uh, of course, you are open to apply to any of our, our locations and uh, uh, those kind of job postings that, uh, that Philip mentioned, those are all uh, that you can you can see the locations in, in there as well. So, of course, these uh, these opportunities are open in, in all our three locations in Oulu, Tampere and in Espo as well. So if you find a position that the position that you are interested, so please do not hesitate to 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 apply any any of those of those locations. Good question. Hmm. Next one. What is the problem when you meet the requirements and make CV and cover letter accordingly, but still get that template email saying that um, your application Thank you for your application, but unfortunately, and this is where the question ends, but I think we can guess where it leads. Yeah, so basically it's um, one reason, of course, is is the amounts that, that we are hiring. Of course, the amounts that we are hiring uh, trainees are, are those, it, it's a lot, but we, but we also get a lot of applications as well. And even though we are, of course, we would like to and love to offer a traineeship to every single single one that that who applies. Uh, it's just it, it's just, it's just not not a possibility. So if this time you there there wasn't a match or you you weren't uh, you weren't selected, so please do stay encouraged and and apply again. And like Philip uh, said previously, is that we are uh, kind of like, uh, hiring trainees and thesis workers. Uh, throughout the whole year. So if this if this time you weren't selected, so please do keep applying and, and seeing our career sites for, for other opportunities. Okay, then the next one. Uh, do you have master thesis uh, UAMC positions in testing hardware development in all? Uh, all those positions, like I like we already stated, is is uh, in, in our website and uh, we do have for, for the for the you have got as, as well traineeships for, for them as well. So we have all those kind of like a levels of, of education all the way from uh, from uh, what do you call it in English? Amatikolo, like, like a basic level professional uh, kind of like education. Uh, so all the way from there up to up to university level. So all of that all of that is is for for that that we are looking for. Okay, then to Johannes and Jere. Uh, in the slide related to software development skill, there is big data virtualization. Can you explain what that is? Uh, information visualization related, data engineering related, cloud data integration, extended reality or something else? It's actually a combination of all. So what we mean with the big data platform is that, for example, in the Johannes' presentation, 
how we visualize the, the testing data is it, it's basically automated. Everything is automated. So once the testing is done, it's fully updated. The big data is updated to the to the cloud platforms, then again to the servers, and then again to the visualizations tools. So that then our management and also the testers themselves can just by one click go and have a look on the on the specific test case results or from the from the previous ones, how we have developed, how we have progressed along with the with the year, with the month on a quarterly basis. So that's what it basically means. Yeah, the amount of data is huge mm -hmm. that is available in, in IT field and especially Nokia, we're, we're, we're collecting a lot of key parameters uh, and it's really important that we can then visual, visualize those, uh, not just collect those, but actually visualize them and we can we can learn a lot from those kind of things and then plan plan ahead that hey, we, we see that this data is is going accordingly. We can plan next year that it will go same way, most likely that sort of things. OK, then the next question is about uh, are then any new crazy ideas being implemented <laughs> like drone testing uh, in the past, like mixed reality, mixed reality, uh, artificial intelligence and so on. I think all the new ones we can't even tell. We can't even tell, but <laughs> constantly ideas. Or do you have something to say from I, the drone? From, from my side, maybe the one that uh, actually was mentioned, the, the that we are fully automating the flights so that's something that is sounds scary that okay you guys are not visually inspecting at the somebody's not manually controlling that system anymore but actually is going automatically so but that's that's the future so that that's the direction that we want to go and and to optimize the work and make it as efficient as we can that's maybe something uh, but as mentioned there is also <laughs> other other things ongoing that we cannot even mention here yeah, but uh, definitely there's a lot of crazy ideas happening in Ottawa. And also from the Ottawa point of view, this was only a fraction what we could show. So there is tons of different testing environments which we even didn't mention or didn't highlight due to the lack of time. And then also there are newer plans and newer environments for, for the future being built at the moment. Then there is a question about other European sites. Uh, is the 5G development only happening in Finland or is it possible to also start in other countries? All around the world, basically. Depends, of course, what kind of a testing, but there are in Europe, in the United States, in the in the Asian markets as well, tons of different opportunities and then, you know, highly related to the 5G as well. I graduated from the University of Oulu uh, in the field of energy and environmental engineering. Is it possible to apply for summer training position? Um, if you have already graduated, then it's, uh, you can apply for the entry level positions, but uh, for the training positions, there is the requirement to still be enrolled uh, in a Finnish higher education institution. So then the, the entry level positions would be the way to go. Hi, uh, I have a question. Uh, would like to know if to pick, uh, the, the guest uh, questions because they are the most uh, that we want to maybe share. But I, I, I read this long one. Um, is there any way that we can know the things you look for uh, in a position, for example, for a trainee software engineer? If you say you are looking for this extent, we can highlight our sample project in GitHub and talk to the point. I believe as master's students, we can catch a technology within a month or less because we have done so. Did you get the point? I think that was really well covered in the Philips presentation. There, there was some, we, we are lo looking not just your technical background, but actually the personalities also. I think that's that's something something that you can, you can Bring, bring out in your CV and uh, in your cover letter and uh, talk about those things also. And uh, the one that we're mentioning that the, don't be afraid about the interview being as a test. It is like a professional um, personality match with the employer and the employee that 
uh, when you go to an interview, it's not like a test. It, it is actually like, hey, could we be compatible? How would we work as a team, or how could we could we do some some great things? That 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 sort of thing. Mm. And one point from my side as well for that is that um, I think that would be one of the soft skills as well. So if if um, you feel like okay, this is somewhat matching to to my expertise and, and my career aspirations, but this one topic I'm a bit lacking what we are looking for or don't know some specific tool or, or, or something. So then please bring out in the cover letter on your CV or some other places the, your ways of learning. How, what is your way of learning and how do you learn new things and, and kind of like a, to, to collaborate on, on that one? So that's, that, that's the soft skills as well. So we kind of like know what the, what the starting point is and, and your willingness to, to learn and your capability to learn that, that new thing. So that is one of the soft skills as, as well to highlight. Okay, this uh, this will be the last question. There is a couple uh, in the same uh, field. So let's see if you can give, give any practical tips for these uh, team participants. So um, when, when someone is using this job portal website, uh, you have the profile there and there is an issue with with the cover letter. So uh, if you apply for different positions uh, and your previous CV and cover letter is still there, and those are in process and you cannot delete those and you need to apply for a new, new position. So will the applications get the CV and cover letter we uploaded for the specific position? Can you? Uh, I believe the tool works so that uh, it's kind of like a it's kind of like a role specific mm -hmm. so, so that you are able to to update your CV and, and kind of like your, your cover letter per role. That is that is my kind of like a take on, on that one. But if you are facing any technical issues on, on there, so I believe there is a way of of kind of like a Q&A or, or some some tech support as, as well throughout the, uh, the, the portal. So please do not hesitate to to raise raise those issues if you if you face any. So of course we are trying to make the application and submit the application as, as easy as possible. And and sometimes I even even take those into my to my personal email and, and then then forward them to, to hiring managers. Not the ideal situation I know, but but if you're facing some some issues, so please do do raise those issues and, and we will try to fix them. Okay, minute left, so the last one. <laughs> uh, somebody just coming to Finland eight months back who already had a master's in embedded system tech and some years of experience. Can I still be eligible for the entry level position? For well, entry level, are you, if you are still in, in school, uh, maybe the trainee position would be, would be kind of like at the first starting point. But if you have already some years of experience, so so maybe you could then start, uh, maybe not just from the from the scratch, but but yeah, for the for the trainee positions, I would I would say if you are still in still in school, so then you would be eligible for the for the trainee positions as well. That's a wrap up. Yeah, I guess that that's also. Thank you for joining us today, and uh, have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.